What's cracking, fools? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Nicholas. Big dogs gotta eat fantasy football we had some major news break last night i apologize that it took me 12 hours to get this video up but you know i had to be the first one on youtube to get you some info to get you in the lead with what's cracking in the nfl for fantasy football purposes which leads us to brandon cooks being traded from the patriots to the los angeles rams this is how the trade went down the patriots gave up cooks they gave up a Fourth round pick, thus swapping their first round picks. So the Pats move up to 23rd. They have the 23rd overall pick in the draft. They also have the 31st overall pick in the draft. Very rarely do they. And this 23rd pick overall, it's kind of funny. This is the highest pick they've had in the draft since 2012. So they give up Cooks in a fourth round. They swap first round picks and they get a sixth round pick from the Rams. So the Pats now have two first rounders. They have two second rounders. And I hear a lot of chirping, a lot of people trying to be cute and like, Oh, well, OBJ's asking price is two first rounders. The Pats have, like, wrong. That's not happening. I put that on my mama. They're not trading for OBJ. Mike Reese, ESPN's Boston reporter, longtime Boston reporter, also agrees with me on that fact. Sorry, my chair, man, squeaky. What's going on? So what I think they're doing, I think they found their guy in a quarterback, and I think they're looking to make their move with whoever they think that guy is. And with all this trade power, with all these picks, these assets, the Patriots they're either gonna move up further in the first round to, to hit their guy, or they think their guy is gonna fall to them, whatever whatever the case may be. But I think they're going with a quarterback and that's what, what they're doing with all these picks. But enough about real football. Let's talk some fake football, the reason y'all are here. One more thing before we start. If you sign up for my newsletter, which I'll link right here, you scroll down to the bottom and put your info in, I'll send you out one sleeper, one bust, one tip or trick every single week. No spam, no promotions. Straight to your email inbox. So go sign up for the newsletter and you'll get that. But yeah, let's get let's get cracking with some fake football stuff. All right, I'm going to put on my scientist glasses. Because we're in the lab now. we cooking up. we marinating a little bit. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go kind of player by player on the Pats and the Rams and give you what my analysis is, my breakdown of each player and what it means for them. 2018 fantasy football. Obviously, we'll start with Brandon Cooks. He had another really, really solid year again in uh, in, in a New England uniform. He threw up 65, 10, 82, and 7. Another solid performance. Wide receiver 12 in fantasy and half point PPR leagues. I will say though, man, for as good as the numbers were, I'm not really surprised that he was on the move again. I feel like the chemistry between Brady and Cooks was just not there. You know, they played well together, but there was there was a little X factor missing, man. There was like they wanted to love each other and make it work, but all they found was was this lust. There was no real connection. It was like a, an elongated one night stand, and you know, all one night stands must come to an end. Thus, the Pats called an Uber for Cooks. Brought his ass out to LA. But let's dive into some of Cooks' numbers a little deeper here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be looking at my screen a lot because these are where all my notes are. So don't worry, I'm still paying attention to y'all. His yards per reception number, 16.6 yards per reception, which is a career high for him. It ranked seventh in the NFL among all receivers with at least 60 targets. His uh, average depth of target, 15.9, which was sixth highest in the NFL. So as you could see, he was the clear deep point of this offense and was an absolute field stretcher, not anything new to you guys. We all know how quick he is, how fast he is, and he is one of those guys that gets those deep targets. He had 16 catches thrown 20 plus yards down the field, which was tied for first in the NFL with DeAndre Hopkins, and that is per Mike Reese, ESPN reporter. 110 targets on the year pretty heavily involved in this offense for a single Patriots wide receiver. He's just 24 years old. He will be turning 25 this year. He moves to LA and, you know, everyone kind of just expects him to fit right into that Watkins role. Is that the case? I think so. You look at how these players are used, how similar they are in terms of, of play style. As I just mentioned, right? Cooks is 16.6 yards per reception last year. Watkins was 15.2 years old. He will be turning 25 this year. He moves to LA and, you know, everyone kind of just expects him to fit right into that Watkins role. Is that the case? I think so. You look at how these players are used, how similar they are in terms of, of play style. As I just mentioned, right? Cooks is 16.6 yards per reception last year. Watkins was 15.2. Those are both very high numbers. Those tell you that they are field stretchers. Average depth of target for Watkins, 15.2. Cooks is, again, was 15.9. Very clo close in terms of 
where they're getting their throws and where they're getting their targets. So very much the same player in terms of uh, you know where they play on the field and how they operate down the field. The big difference, of course, was Watkins's Watkin Watkins his volume in the Los Angeles Rams offense. He only saw 66 targets on the year. Turn that into 39 catches, 593 yards, and eight touchdowns. So 66 targets. But when you look at guys like Woods and Cup, they combine for 170 targets. And it makes sense when you break it down further and look at this offense, you know, the system, Jared Goff in particular, where he likes to throw the ball. So Goff's throwing location. He ranked 20th last year in deep ball attempts, and that's throws of 20 yards or more down the field. So deep ball attempts, 20th in the NFL per player profiler, 24th highest average depth of target, 8.5 average depth of target amongst NFL quarterbacks. He's not attempting a lot of deep balls, and even his shorter passes are shorter, basically what I'm saying. 21st in air yards per attempt. So his game is not tailored to throwing the ball deep. His game is not tailored to playing with a guy like Brandon Cooks, which, you know, obviously bringing Brandon Cooks to the offense is a great dynamic piece, but I think that obviously limits Cooks' ceiling. Cooks has always finished well in fantasy football, but the consistency ha had been a struggle or has always been a struggle, right? He's kind of a boomer bust guy. And I see that as being his kind of label this year for 2018 fantasy football. Last year, he had six games of the 16 games he played, six games where he finished with under 40 receiving yards. Where you picked Brandon Cooks last year in drafts, he was probably a mid third round pick. So he was your wide receiver two, if not your wide receiver one. Six of his games, he finished with less than 40 receiving yards basically a non-factor. I want to look at uh, a couple other numbers as well. I'll look at how they were utilized near the end zone, you know, towards the red zone and inside the 10 yard line. So last year, Brandon Cooks had 12 targets, 12 red zone targets. Watkins had 10, six targets inside the 10 for Brandon Cooks, five inside the 10 for Watkins. So they're used similarly in that fashion, but it's not very highly utilized. And, and you're looking at a guy like Cooper Cup, who saw like 24 red zone targets and a ton of targets inside the 10 yard line. So seeing as Cooks's size is even smaller than Sammy Watkins is, it's hard to imagine that Jared Goff looks elsewhere again this season outside of like a Robert Woods or Cooper Cup when they're in that vicinity of the field. Basically what I'm getting at is, you know, Cooks's targets are going to go down almost indefinitely, right? He's not seeing the 120 targets he's been seeing with the Patriots or even the 130 targets he saw with the uh, with the Saints, with the Taints. What I think is he'll settle probably be around the 100, 100 target mark. And I think that's probably going to be similar for all three receivers in LA between Woods, Cooks, and Cup. I would actually think maybe 100 targets is probably his cap for Cooks. And just another Kavit per Mike Clay of ESPN, the Rams had a third wide receiver on the field for 92% of their plays, which is the highest number in the entire NFL last year. So I, I don't think anyone's question was whether or not Cooks is going to be on the field, but maybe it was for Woods or Cup. But that won't be the case. They're basically three wide receiver set at all times. So they'll all be full-time players. For Cooks, I, I see him more as a wide receiver three, a boom bust guy. I personally will let someone else take him in the fourth or fifth round, and I would wait on him. I like Woods or Cup, either of them, who are going to be drafted later than Cooks at their value. Something else I wanted to dive into that I think is a pretty big underlying piece of this kind of whole story is Robert Woods missed time last year, right? He played in 12 games. Those games where he missed time, though, was, it was a big uptick in production for both Sammy Watkins and Cooper Cup. You look at these numbers in the splits, Sammy Watkins averaged nearly five full fantasy points per game more when Woods was out of the lineup as compared to when Woods was in the lineup. So if you're expecting similar numbers from Cooks to Watkins, like if you're expecting Cooks to put up the same numbers, remember that, that a lot of his production came in the games where Woods was actually out. And obviously you're expecting Woods to to play the full 16 games, I mean, you don't expect it, but you know what I mean? You don't analyze players based off thinking they're going to be injured. So that is something to keep an eye on when it comes to Cooks and how you properly value him. Next, we'll move on to Cooper Cup. Of course, like 17 seconds after I published my top sleepers video, which you could find right here yesterday, if you missed it, that's a good one. Cooper Cup was one of the five guys I put in there, and then Cooks was traded to LA. I'm like, sick, of course that shit would happen to me. Anyways, I actually like, eh, I don't like it. I'm not gonna say I like the trade for Cup, but I don't think it kills his value whatsoever. I think it'll push his ADP down further and further, and he'll become more of a value. I don't think his production really dips off all that much with Cooks here. I think he's still the same player that he was last year. He's running the very, very far majority of his routes from the slot. Him and Cooks 
as I showed you from the average depth of target and the yards per reception, are very different players. They're getting completely different targets. And we saw that last year with the dynamic of Cup, Woods, and, and Watkins, right? Cup just operates from the slot. But again, I want you to look at Cup's production with and without Robert Woods. So with the Woods and Brandon Cooks both healthy, obviously limits Cup's upside. It kind of sucks because I was I was kind of banking on a breakout year from Cooper Cup had they not signed Brandon Cooks. But overall, I think he can produce very similar to the numbers that he produced last year, which were good enough and valuable compared to where you picked him. So if he can put up 60 to 70 receptions, 800 yards, six to eight touchdowns, he's still gonna be a value where you get to pick him. So I, I like Cup a lot still, and I think his ADP just falls a little further. Robert Woods, Robert Woods. So what does this mean for the Rams number one wide receiver in 2018? Yes, I said wide receiver one, because that's what he was last year. On a per game basis, he was very, very good with Goff. And I think that's a big piece of it. I think the fact that he's going to have chemistry already with Goff going into the season is something that's huge. And call me crazy, but I think the Brandon Cooks trade actually really helps out Woods in the fact that had they not gotten someone like Cooks or like another star wide receiver, they would have had Josh Reynolds lining up as their wide receiver too. And this would have been unquestionably making Woods the wide receiver one there in LA, which means opposing defenses would without a doubt put their cornerback one on Woods. And they have a brutal, brutal slate of games. I know just off the top of my head, looking at the schedule before, they see Richard Sherman twice. They see Patrick Peterson twice, Xavier Rhodes, Darius Slay, Lattimore, Casey Hayward. All these guys would have been all over Robert Woods. Now Brandon Cooks is there, takes the pressure off a little bit. Obviously, some of them will probably still stick to Woods, but the, the majority of them will at least go 50-50 on, on Brandon Cooks. So that takes the pressure off Woods. He still becomes like the wide receiver one in terms of possession there. So for Woods, obviously the target totals are going to go down. His volume is going to dip a little bit, but I like Woods where his value is. His value right now, his ADP is all the way up right now. I think it's at like 70 or 80. So even if that, if that falls even lower with Cooks here, I love that value for Woods because he was really, really, really good for the time. I think I saw a stat that was from weeks three to 11 last year, Woods was wide receiver eight in PPR. I hate when people like nitpick like specific weeks, like in the middle of the season and do that, but I thought it was interesting nonetheless. So overall for the Rams, I see Cooks as a wide receiver three, boom or bust. I see Cup as a high end wide receiver three in PPR leagues. And I see Woods as like a low end wide receiver two in, you know, half point PPR league. So in terms of value, Woods and Cup are my guy. Brandon Cook, I think is going to be picked a little bit too high. So I'll move over to New England. And the winners of this trade, I, I can easily say without a doubt, are Edelman and Chris Hogan. Half of my Instagram posts last week were about Edelman and how I'm super pumped up that he's coming back. And I thought he was going to be super undervalued. Now Cooks is gone and everyone knows about Edelman and everyone's going to be looking to pick him. So his ADP is going to shoot up. He'll probably still be a value wherever he lands. Cooks had around like 19 to 20 percent of New England's target share last year. Edelman from 2013 to 2016 in those four seasons had like a 27% target share. You see how big of a piece of this offense was. And that was with good receivers. That was without good receivers. Like it didn't matter who came in, who came out. Edelman was still consistently at a huge piece of that target share. So with Cooks out, things should go back to normal. Hogan's going to be the number one guy on the outside. Edelman's going to catch 40 passes a game for 80 yards, be a PPR stud. Bronx's going to go back to doing what he does, scoring touchdowns, racking up yards, clapping cheeks. You know what it is. It's cheek clapping season, y'all. Overall, I think Edelman's going to be a really good value in PPR leagues. Chris Hogan. I think he he's probably the major uh, the major winner here, right? That receiving core was super jumbled, even last year, but Hogan made the most out of it. And prior to that shoulder injury, which was like week eight, week nine, he was killing it in fantasy. He was wide receiver five in standard, wide receiver nine in full PPR from weeks one through eight. So for the first half of the season, he was a legitimate wide receiver one in fantasy. Then the shoulder injury came, he missed time, he was less than 100%, and that kind of killed everything. But he did end the season with a monster Super Bowl. Six catches, 128 yards, and a touchdown. Do not forget that, how he ended it. Hogan's only 29 years old. He'll be 30, I think, by the start of the season. Cooks and Amendola are both gone, which frees up about 200 targets to split between Edelman and Hogan. And Hogan obviously already had his share of targets there. He was averaging nearly seven targets a game in weeks one through eight with an average depth of target of about 13, 12.9 yards. Cooks nearly identical. For the first eight games of the season, 6.3 targets a game, average depth of target, 12.9. So they were basically the same player on the outside, just splitting the same targets. Now, a lot of those are going to be siphoned into Chris Hogan. And I think that's going to 
turn out to be a monster, monster upgrade for him in the fantasy realm of things. So I think he has a really, really legitimate good chance to be a wide receiver too in fantasy this year with upside. Uh, I think both Edelman and Hogan both have that potential. Other Patriots wide receivers, and I know you guys want you guys want me to say, how bad do y'all want me to say that Malcolm Mitchell's gonna break out this year? You ain't gonna get that from me. It just ain't gonna happen. Here's the thing. Malcolm Mitchell, he'll return this year as probably, probably the wide receiver three on the team. He missed all of last year with a knee injury. He missed four games back in 2016. So health has always been a concern. He struggled with injuries during and since his entering of the league. Overall, I think people just really like this guy's measurables. He ran a solid 4-4-5-40, has a really good burst score. This is per player profiler. And we saw flashes back in 2016. They had some big games, some big plays. But this offense right now, especially with all the pieces there, does not scream out like Malcolm Mitchell breakout. There's just too many options. Like I said, best case scenario, he's wide receiver three there behind Hogan and Edelman, which makes him the fifth receiving option on that team. Behind those two, Gronk, either Burkhead or James White, whoever in the passing game. So I'm not excited about Mitchell. I think he's a rotational player who will probably get 40 to 55% of the snaps on the team. It's not a guy you want in your fantasy lineup. Everything I just said is basically the exact same breakdown for Kenny Britt, Philip Dorsett, Corderell, Patterson with even less. So if I had to take one of those four guys, it would be Malcolm Mitchell just based on his athletic ability, his measurables. He's been with the system for a while, just 25 years old, so potential still to come. He is not going to get that much playing time this year is basically what I'm getting at. And uh, that kind of wraps it up. But before we go, I want you guys to do a couple things. If you haven't already signed up for the newsletter, do that. Leave a comment down below. Half point PPR, who would you rather have, Hogan or Edelman this year? And I also want to do a uh, quick word from the sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by fantasyjocks.com. Where are you at, Ring? My little ring-a-ling. They are the number one source for fantasy football league equipment. Talking about live draft boards, if you do a live draft board with your friends, they have very good draft boards, comes with a whole kit of t-shirts and mugs and Sharpie and everything you need for your draft. They obviously have rings, they have belts, trophies. The belt is legit. This thing is very high quality. Have your league mates all chip in 10 bucks, 12 bucks or whatever, and then you got a belt for life. You got a belt for your league. You can engrave the champion's name each year, year in and year out, so you know who won. Y'all can talk a bunch of smack with it, or you could you know, chip in five bucks for a ring, chip in seven bucks for a, they have six trophies, like Lombardi trophies. Fantasyjocks.com, go check them out. I'll have them linked in the description. Thank you, Spanish Fantasy Jocks, for sponsoring this video. And that's going to be the end of this video. Please scroll down, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a comment down below with anything you want, fantasy football related. I'll talk some smack with y'all. We can get in the grip. We can do it. We can get real. Anyways, that's it. Give it a thumbs up. Peace.